I don't hate these albums, I am just disappointed in them. And you know that well-used old saying, it's not you, it's me, no, it's definitely them. Hey, review family, keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, reviewing music for the love of music, and I'm back again to bring you another video. Continuing the absolute clusterfuck of an idea that is List Week 2019, I will be counting down my top seven most disappointing albums of 2019. Albums that aren't inherently bad, aren't terrible, aren't the worst of the worst, but just albums that really, really did not exceed my expectations, and if anything, went so off base that I just didn't like them at all. The first of which is number seven, Lil Pump's album, Harvard Dropout. In the worst albums of 2019 video, which I highly suggest you go check I worked quite hard on it. I did hint at the fact that Lil Pump's album Harvard Dropout was an honorable mention as one of the worst albums and for good reason. I'm not gonna sit here and say that he doesn't have some catchy flows or catchy songs. He is much more of a singles machine than he is an album maker. Even going back to the Lil Pump mixtape, I don't think he has much left to be desired. He's the type of artist kind of like 6 9 He just puts it all out there in front of you. His dynamics are fully shown or lack thereof. And that's not to say there aren't some catchy songs on this. Esqueda is still a fun track, but for the most part this was a really disappointing album if nothing else but for the fact that I was really hoping that Lil Pump was gonna do something different, was gonna come through with something different, but it just didn't happen. Next up is the Wage War album, Pressure. There's something wrong with me. I get it, there's something wrong with me. A lot of people enjoyed this album. I personally had more expectations of the band than was met, and since their formation, I've really been hoping and praying that this band was going to have something different than what they currently showcased on Pressure. Their melodic metalcore sound is so dime a dozen, and when you combine it with cringy lyrics like on tracks like Who I Am, you get a high gloss, post hardcore tinged metalcore album that is very eye roll worthy and a bit cringy to listen to by the midway point, maybe even a little bit before that. Maybe I'm being generous. Number five, Blackpink's album, Kill This Love. I did talk about this at length in the Worst Albums of the Year video. This is the only repeat on this list. I really talk about everything that I would want to talk about in that video, so I do highly suggest going and checking out my Least Favorite Albums of the Year video. But just to sum it up, Blackpink blew up too quickly. The entertainment industry that they are stuck into is abusing them. They don't know what the hell to do with them. They didn't expect them to get this popular. And I think that the four girls are suffering. I stand rosé if that's what you want to hear. Moving on. Next up is Dark Thrones album, Old Star. You know, the Underground Resistance, probably the only Dark Throne album in a hot minute that I've genuinely enjoyed. This band, I appreciate their dynamics so much. I cannot explain how much I respect their evolution. Under a Funeral Moon and Transylvanian Hunger and A Blaze in the Northern Sky are black metal essential classics, what they forged for the genre. No one can really compare that closely. Their string of albums in the 90s is arguably the best string of black metal albums that have ever been released. This, however, in comparison, isn't necessarily the most terrible thing that I've heard. They're returning to their roots a little bit, but they still have that thrash metal influence that they've been showcasing recently, some of that crust punk influence. And I really think for Dark Throne to release music that is going to be of the same caliber as some of their early material, or even some of their recent material, I really think they're going to have to get a little bit better at blending genres and figuring out that sound before they go down that road in the future. I was really excited to check this album out. I was really hoping that it was going to be something else and that I was going to be really into it, but overall I was very disappointed by this release, hence why it's on this list. Next up is the St. Vitus self-titled album. Kind of like Dark Throne, an older band that is an absolute classic for the genre releasing an album that I just think is extremely ho-hum. Alongside Pentagram and so many other bands, and even if you want to go further back, Black Sabbath, St. Vitus is a necessity for the doom metal genre. It's a slog, even by doom metal standards. And please don't misinterpret that, don't misconstrue that. Some of my favorite genres include doom metal, funeral doom metal is one of my favorite genres, and that's even more patience testing at times. It's more so in the execution, just the execution. Honestly, I could kind of say the same about Possess album this year, Revelations of Oblivion, I believe it was called, in the way it's an older classic band that vitalized a style in its heyday, really making a fairly drab record by today's standards. If you do like doom metal, I feel like this is still going to be an enjoyable release, but personally, I really wanted to hear a little bit more innovation 
to some degree by St. Vitus this late into their career because I think at this point they could do something else to their sound without harming their sound too much because nothing on this album isn't something they've done countless times before. Next up is the album Rituals of Power by the band Misery Index. This hurts. This hurts my heart. This hurts my soul. Preface. The drums sound amazing on this record. Genuinely some of the best drums I've heard in a Death Grind album in a long time. That being said, everything else is so dime a dozen, it hurts. Even though this album doesn't overstate its welcome, it's not a super, super long album, it is a little migraine inducing for how little they come up with original ideas. Even if you enjoy this record, anyone that has heard a lot of grindcore or death grind is gonna understand that this isn't the most original album. Not only by the genre standards, but even by Misery Index's standards. And while I do heavily implore you all to check out this album as well as Misery Index's entire discography, I was disappointed with how meager of a release this was in the grand scheme of things and in their canon. And I just hope that going into the next decade, they maybe have some fresh ideas, some unique styles, some unique things into their own sound, maybe. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Rolling them sleeves up. We're going back to the Elijah Drama Days, Kane Hill's EP, Kill the Sun. This acoustic rock Americana, grunge-infused sound, alternative rock sound, experimental EP by Kane Hill sucks. And even after the drama, even after I got personally harassed in my D DMs for a solid few weeks, got Twitter DMs out the ass, got comments out the ass talking about how I look stupid, how I sounded stupid, how my opinion was wrong, how I should get off YouTube, personally being called out by the singer of the band. I don't care. I still stand by that. This album is hot garbage. Even through all the drama, even through the fact that this was one of my most disagreed on reviews, and even though I got so attacked for a while, I don't care. If you're gonna be a critiquer, if you're gonna be a reviewer of any sort of artistic medium, you should be able to speak your mind, and that is my whole point on this channel. I can't tell you how much hate I've got over so many reviews, but that's part of the game. It's something I've always been aware of and something I stepped into this knowing, and the fact that Elijah acted like such a butthurt baby over this really does showcase the type of dickweed he is. I had respect for Kane Hill as a band. I even stated, I believe in the review, that I enjoyed a lot of their previous material. But he really showcased a lot about himself and the type of person he was. The fact that he wasn't able to take any sort of criticism without having to feel like he has to do some pushback. As if I have some sort of swing. As if I'm this big important person that if I say your EP's bad, then suddenly your sales are just going to fucking plummet. I didn't do shit to you and I didn't mean to do anything to you. I was merely reviewing your album. And big deal, I reviewed it poorly. Okay? I thought the compositions were bad. I wasn't a fan of the lyricism. I wasn't a fan of the production. And the drama just kind of left even more of a bad taste in my mouth. And it's going to leave a bad taste in my mouth going forward with any Kane Hill projects. It is what it is. And I know for a fact that I have a lot of reviewers watching me. I know that for a fact that I have smaller reviewers watching me. That I have been asked before how to do certain things. How do I do this? How do I do that? What's are some, what are some tips for this? Don't care what anyone says about you. At the end of the day, this is your content, not theirs. And if you anger an artist, if you anger a commenter, if you anger a band, at the end of the day, that's not going to harm you in the long run. Keep making things because at the end of the day, if you're making people think about the music they're listening to, you're doing your job. I don't come on here to praise every single album that I listen to. I speak my mind about everything and that's the end of discussion. And if you're wondering why this is so important to me, it's because I've been asked throughout the whole year about Kane Hill, and I'm so sick of hearing about them. Every single time I get a message talking about the drama, every time I get a message about that video or somebody new commenting on it, it's really, really amazing to me that people still care that much about a little EP review that I did at the start of the year, but that really goes to show the sway that I have. To be able to get that many people talking, to get that many people arguing, it's kind of sickening, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I said what I said, and I stand by it. Kane Hill's album, Kill the Sun, their EP, is my most disappointing album of the year. So go ahead and let me know what are your most disappointing albums of the year. What albums just didn't tickle your fancy that you really, really thought would tickle your fancy. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, and I'm signing off saying farewell. <laughs>